Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, June 4th, 2013, at 1045 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, out here in Northern California. I've rested in the Lord, and I've been given a word, actually a revelation, that lines up with the word. You will need a Bible, and there will be several scriptures. Um, first of all, I just want to thank God for the gift of life. Every day that you wake up is an opportunity to serve God. And I think that we are should take full advantage of that. Um, I want to talk about... We've, re, we've had a deluge of prayer requests um, since June 1st for about three days now. And... I thank God for them and I want everybody to know who has put in a prayer request and there's a link in this um, speaker and it'll go to YouTube and it'll go to Twitter and it'll go to Facebook amen thank you Holy Spirit I would ask that every everybody that that knows that prayer requests are being made that they would also come into agreement with me that God answered these prayers but what we do of uh, to date, right now at 10:45 a.m. on 6/4/2013, I want everybody to know that we have actually uh, here at Righteous Crime Ministry have come into agreement, held hands, and put your prayer request before our intercessor, our High Priest, Jesus Christ, and laid it at His feet, and we believe. For the answer for your miracle through his power and his might. And he, he has the miracle work and ability to do so. And we've turned it over to him. Every one of them. Amen. And uh, the number one prayer request that we receive is family salvation. I've been doing some statistics on these. The number two prayer request is that those that are already saved can hear from God more. And the number three re prayer request is healing and deliverance. So, and God can do all of that. So I want to address number two on how you can hear from God more. And that, that particular prayer request, as I said, out of dozens of prayer requests that is the number two prayer request as far as family salvation i too have prayers to the throne daily for family members of mine that have not made jesus christ lord and savior of their life they're in rebellion and in love with this world and i pray for them daily so i share with you in that prayer request and i'm not going to shout and holler you know this is just what the lord has revealed to me um, I was praying yesterday, yesterday, sometimes I, I honestly believe you should just unplug from the internet. It's because I was in there praying yesterday. I did not Facebook. I did not Twitter. I did not YouTube. I spent time with my father. Uh, actually, man, my, my father that art in heaven, you know, and my, uh, my biological father, he's 77. And we talked about a lot of things that are occurring uh, in the world right now. And um, I honestly believe that there, that we should unplug from the internet and plug in to God, tap into God, His presence. And so that's what I did. I, I spent a lot of time with my father. And then I spent a lot of time in the prayer room. There's a certain room in here. I call it my prayer closet. And uh, I, I've been praying in there for seven years now. And for some reason that only God knows, um, he speaks to me in there. And a lot of people want to hear from him. And you understand he's constantly speaking. It's just a matter of, the right time so I'm going to talk about that and in and, and learning to tune out the world 
Because there's the common denominator from the people that are saying that they can't hear from God, I'll give you some key words. And I'm trying to help, not condemned to help, is I'm confused or I don't feel worthy or I don't have dreams and visions and um, uh, I, I, they just don't feel worthy enough to hear from God. Even people who pray and read the word and fast daily don't feel worthy enough to, to hear from God. So I took that, that one particular prayer request of having people hear from God and I went into my prayer closet and I bowed down on my knees and I cried holy and I said, Lord God, you know, I thank God for this day. I thank God for this ministry. And I just began to just spend time with him. Not, you know, not really wanting a word. It was fine for me not to hear anything. It was fine for me not to have a vision, not to have a dream, not to hear from him. It's times, here's the message. It's times like that where you walk by faith and not by sight. God wants to get you to a state of maturity. When Christ returns, you're full of faith. You're, you're full of faith to where I, I, I trust you. Listen, I have went entire months in the last five years. I've went entire months without hearing a word from God. And it was on those days that I've learned that I, I needed to uh, trust in him more than ever. It's easy um, I mean, the, just counting the cost, it's easy to have faith in God when you have a dream and a vision every week. It's easy when you give a prophecy and, it, and, it, and you see it fulfilled in the same week. It's easy to believe in God. It's easy to know that he's speaking to you. But it's on the days when you're not hearing from him. That you that you got to continue to believe in him anyway. Like yesterday, I couldn't hear anything from God. I asked him for a message. He gave me none. And I loved him the same as I did on the day he gave me the vision. I love God in season and out of season. I love God when I hear from him and when I don't hear from him. Because if, I, if he's not giving me a message, then it must not be the appointed time. Because to, to, usually when I hear something for him, it's to share with others. It's about others. So I want to talk about that being about others. And I'm going to give some, because uh, I'm going to give some scriptural reference. Uh, Habakkuk 2, 3. And it says, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. Uh and it hasteneth it toward the end, and it shall not lie. Though it tarry, the vision. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely, it will surely come. It will not delay. Here's a, here's the the King James. It says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak." Now that that's a ram of word for you, a now word for you today. There is a vision that God has for you. There's a purpose. He has a purpose for your life. And, and, and he is going to let you know exactly when it is, exactly at the appointed time. Even though it's tarrying and you're praying and asking for it, we're on his time, not our time. And it'll be right on time. It says, and though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. Okay, so it's going to come to you. Um... In Second Corinthians, uh, people, in Second Corinthians twelve, I'll just do a couple of these scriptures so I can tell you the the revelation I had in my prayer room. In Second Corinthians twelve, the vision of paradise, the Apostle Paul he writes under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It says, "It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast." In other words, and I've I've, I've taught on this so many times. It says, "I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord." It's going to happen. If you serve God and you believe in God and you have a calling on your life and you've counted that cost and you've accepted the call, then you are going to come to dreams and visions and the nine gifts of the spirit. Amen. It, it, it says that it's going to happen. But what the message here is, you know, 
Are you doing it for yourself or are you, are you doing it for God? So, and that's why he got a thorn in the flesh. In verse 7, he says, Unless I shall be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. Everybody say abundance of revelations. Do you think that that was just for one person? I'm going to show you. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. Lest I be exalted above measure. In other words, to keep him humble. Because he knew. He said, I, look, I'm just going to say it like this. I know I'm going to come to, to, to visions and revelations. But you know why? Because Christ spoke to him from the sky. He did on the road to Damascus. Jesus Christ spoke to then Saul at the time uh, from the sky. And so he knew after everything that he'd seen with his eyes and, and his spiritual ears and eyes were open too, not just his natural eyes. He knew, it, you know, it, the, it's impossible for me not to come to visions and revelations because the spirit of prophecy is within me. And when I do that, I got to make sure that I'm humble and not make it about me, but always make it about him. And that's what the Apostle Paul did. He set an example, not for it to be a history story in, in a history book. He set an example for the living a word on how we should live. So here, here's my revelation that I was in there praying in the prayer closet and I said, Lord, is there a message you'd like me to give to people? You know, I have all these prayer requests and people want to hear from you. And, and they want to know their calling. Everybody wants to know their calling and, you know, and, and so the Lord, he showed me and it was just like a quick, it was, it was, it was like a vision, but it was almost like a knowing in my spirit. And so the best way I know how to see it, I was seeing something in the spirit and I was knowing what was happening. You know, it wasn't like I was watching a movie. It was just like a, a revelation inside me. I saw Moses. I mean, God used him to write the law. And then I saw Elijah. And God used him, this was just yesterday on 6-3, God used Elijah to, to call fire down from heaven. And, 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 uh, and then I saw Mary and Joseph. Could you imagine? And then I saw Apostle Paul. Now just follow me on this. You have the, the law, you have the prophets, you have, could you imagine Paul and Mary, uh, not Paul and Mary, uh, Mary and Joseph, they actually got to raise Jesus. They got to see him perform miracles. They got visited by angels saying, you're going to you're, you're gonna be blessed and highly favored. And, and, and your wife is going to give birth to our Messiah that's going to take away the sins of the world. Can you imagine how they must have felt? And then the Apostle Paul was out killing Christians. And late in the midnight hour, God turned his whole life around. And he gave his whole life to cross. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be them? Well, I asked God about that. And he told me, look, tell my people. I love them. The ones who have a prayer request in that think they, they can't hear from God. I, I pray this blesses you. I love them equally. Those were just men and women I used. I can use anybody I want, but I love everybody equally. I don't have a greater love for one person than I do the other. If you can hear this and you're hearing my voice, God loves you just as much as he did Moses, just as much as he did Elijah. And, and he's calling you and he's asking you to, to expand your faith. And I'm like, but so could you grasp that? He loves you. Christ died for you in the same way, uh, with the same love that he had for Moses and he had for Elijah. It's, it's, there's only one love. Christ has one love and he loves everybody equally. And he's, he's willing to use, the, he, he, he will use those who are willing to forsake their life pick up their cross and follow him. And he left us great examples, but people cannot let go of their love of the world. They say they do, but they can't. 
I have. Maybe, uh, but that doesn't mean God loves me anymore. Do you understand that? This, is, this really happened. And I believe we're really close to going home. And I have been given dreams and visions and prophecies. Surely that's going to happen because I accepted the call. That was the call. He said, are you willing to uh, forsake all and everything? And I have. And follow him? And I said, yes. Now, that doesn't mean he loves me anymore. A matter of fact, the title of this message is, So You Think You Impress Me? God spoke to me. He said, so, I mean, everybody was talking about this this uh, this vision coming true about fires and floods on the same time. That was a, just a, I put that out. You know, God gave me that vision in September. Check my YouTube video. And on September 4th, 3rd or 4th, Driving back from Anaheim, right where the fire broke out that's burning right now. I had a dream that there was a, a fire and a flood at the same time and then an earthquake. And I'm like, how could there be a fire and a flood in the same time and a power loss? And I made the video in in September, the original one. I, I couldn't see how a fire and flood. See, we don't know all. We only know in part. It turns out there's going to be fires and floods everywhere in different areas. And, and so, so God said, so, and then everybody, they're like, oh, Paul, your vision came true. Or, and then there's a lot of haters too. Um, God said, so you think that impresses me? No, I, I don't want to make this real long. I'm trying to make it short, but I also am trying to encourage others that surely you can come to dreams and visions and revelations too, according to your faith. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and faith without works is dead. So what is the works? Okay, let me show you this, and then, uh, and then I'm going to read one more scripture here and, and close, hopefully. When, when I have a dream from God, or you have, or anybody, anybody has a dream from God, and they share it with the world, and it comes to pass, that doesn't impress God. When you get, you know, my prayer is is to go out and lay hands on the sick and let them be healed and delivered and set free from the bondage and the yokes of this evil, deceitful, wicked world and to see what I see, to feel what I feel. I want to just, you know, impart that to them. I have a hunger and thirst for righteousness, not just for me. I want to win souls to the Lord. That's my that's my biggest number one uh you know, thing is, I want to win souls to the Lord. But if I laid hands on the sick and they recovered, God said, that doesn't impress me. Watch me now. So these nine gifts of healing and, and the gift of prophecy and, and the gift of faith, wow. That's mountain moving faith that you received, Paul. You know what God told me yesterday? You think you impress me? It was very humbling to me. He said, the only reason it happened is because I gave it to you. Why would something I gave you impress me? Those are my gifts. Do you understand? Like if you have a prophetic vision, that was from God. If you have a prophetic dream, that was from God. If you lay hands on the sick and they're supernaturally hit, that was from Christ. Christ healed them. You didn't do nothing. All of your works are as filthy rags. You didn't do nothing. So, so it says faith without works is dead. What are the works? I asked God today, what are the works? What, 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 what can I tell these people to do that aren't having dreams and aren't having visions? Because not... Uh, you know, it says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all evangelists? No. It says, no, they're not. And I, I think there's a real concern of mine here on YouTube where the body of Christ is so hungry and thirsty to do what they see others doing. And, and, and God, he clearly spoke to me. I, I, you know, and I'm just being obedient, putting this message out. It's probably... Uh, not for everybody. I can tell you right now, it's not for everybody. There's people on here that they, they feel compelled to put out a, a prophecy every day, whether it be like written or a dream or a vision 
or a message or I heard from God. And um, that doesn't impress God. I'm going to tell you, that does not impress God. If you got anything from God, it's because he gave it to you. That doesn't impress God. You know what? The only the only thing that he looks for in that is obedience. Are you being obedient to your calling? You know what your calling is. If you're called to go out and heal the sick by the laying on of hands, then you're to be obedient to that. You should be out laying hands on people, not on YouTube. If you're called to share dreams and visions, you should boldly. There's people right now, I know, in the sound of my voice, they're hearing from God. They're getting dreams and visions. Those aren't for you and your own private interpretation. Those are to share with the body of Christ. Because God wants to reach the world so his son can come back. Amen? That's why Christ died. So he could destroy the works of the devil and, re and, and uh, uh, receive us unto his own, redeem us from the curse of the law, uh, give us the free gift of salvation, and, and go prepare a place for us where where he is, there we may be also. What we do along the way, it, w with the gifts, that, that's just obedience. It's not, it's not us doing it, it's God doing it. If you prophesy and it comes true, that's because God did it. If you have a dream and it comes true, that's because God gave you the dream. Are you with me? So I said, well, God, well, what, what can we do? You know, if that doesn't impress you, is there anything we can do to impress you? Is there anything I can do? Because I wasn't hearing from God yesterday, and I, I desperately wanted to put out a message to those who, who aren't hearing from God or aren't having dreams and visions. When they see other people typing out a dream or a vision or a prophecy or a word every single day, every day. You know what God told me about that? He said, Paul. I want you to ask YouTube a question. Are they going to YouTube for entertainment? I know this is a tough word, please. I'm sorry, I just have to be obedient. Are they going to YouTube for just entertainment? Or are they going there to draw closer to me to seek me? Let that sink in. I said, that's a good question, Lord. You know what? It kept me off of YouTube all day because I have found myself getting on there just for entertainment purposes when I should be seeking God or doing uh, doing the greater works or going out and doing what Christ commanded. And so some people, they get on there and they get holier now and they say, yeah, I never watch TV. Yeah, but you spend uh, eight hours a day on YouTube. Are you on YouTube for entertainment? Let's be honest because God hears and sees and knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. If you were to look up to God right now and say, I'm not on YouTube for entertainment, would you be telling the truth? We're to seek God. We're to humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways. And then he will come and heal our land. If we repent, that's why I'm calling the world to repentance. Because I, I know there's areas that are not going to repent. Because they're, they refuse to turn from their wicked ways. I know this. So I sound the alarm. But you know what? Sounding the alarm doesn't impress God. He said, are you willing to do this? I said, yes. The fact that I wake up is a gift that I fall on my knees and thank him. Thank you, God, for another day of life. I've been humbled. Do you understand? When you see me put out a thing, I'm not asking for accolades or pat on the backs or or follow me. I'm doing what God called me to do. And you should be doing the same thing. And I'm not on YouTube to entertain people. Or tickle your ears. Or, or tell you how good everything is. Because it's not going to be good. It's 11-11 right now. That's a sign. I'm telling you. It's my address. It's the date I received my calling on 11-11-11. I'm telling you. Some people say. Oh the number 13 is the Illuminati. Read 1 Corinthians 13. And it has 13 verses don't make everything illuminati so i got six minutes i gotta i gotta wrap this message up uh in a way that the lord had given it to me are you on youtube for entertainment what is the difference between that and tv i just want to ask you that youtube can become idolatry if you spend eight hours a day on it, going from video to video to video to video, that's time you could be doing what Christ called you to do. So I asked the Lord, well, 
Is there anything, Lord God, that is pleasing to you? Because clearly these gifts that you see people putting out, I'm not knocking using the gifts. You are, I'm just saying, remember, it's not you. It's God that does it. And you should not force it. Yesterday, I didn't give a message, so there was nothing to put out. It didn't come from, I'm not going to put out something. This channel is dedicated and consecrated, set apart for the work of God. And um, I'm not going to put out something that I didn't receive just so I can have a video. I've went four or five days before I heard even a word. And, and people are like, we need a word. We need a word. I don't have a word. And so I'm not going to force one. And I think people, honestly, if they were true to themselves, they force a word out every single day so they can reach the people. Uh, and then they say, thus says the Lord. No, you said that. Honestly, you said it. Let me quit on that because it seems like it seems kind of mean. And I'm not I'm not here to be mean. Anybody that knows my heart, I'm not here to be mean. So I, so the, the thing is, OK, God, I know I get it now. Everything I do, the calling on my life, the gift, the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy, all that. The dreams, the visions, that doesn't impress you, and I'm humble. So what can I do, Lord God? What can I do for you today? And, and, and this is what he gave me. Um, Matthew 25, and the scripture's in there. And I'm just going to read quickly. Let me explain this, and I'm going to run out of time here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. God told me, Christ, Christ gave you instructions on what to do for him. Visit the widows. When's the last time? Does anybody here know anybody in jail or prison? Go visit them. Matter of fact, there's a guy out here, John. He's in prison. Has anybody considered going visiting him? How about the homeless people that are under that bridge that you drive over every day in your full gas tank? When they don't even have a bottle of water, can you just stop, park, go under the bridge and give them a, a, a bottle of water and say, you know what, uh, God loves you. Or, you know, there's a family on here that messages me all the time and I, I don't have money that they, they live in a car. The, the, the body of Christ should come together and, and get them shelter, basic shelter. It's a husband and a wife and, and a child or like... Um, uh, Annie and by his grace the whole the, the the body of Christ has enough money to help her in her homeless her channels by his grace where's the body of Christ helping her that says to feed the homeless that's what Christ that's what really will, will when you stand before Christ he's going to look at those things not the things does this make sense to anybody we got 28 minutes He's not, he's not impressed with the things that he gifted you with. Those are things that you're, you're, you do in obedience to him. But, but the gift is from him. You're, it's not impressing him to show him, look, God, look what I did. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm the one that gave you that. But by free will, you can go out and do the things that Christ says. That, now, that is something that you do on your own. It doesn't take a gift from God to do any of this stuff. It takes action on your part. It, it's a work by faith that, 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 that will come up in heaven. I'm going to read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of the glory. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And before him shall be gathered all nations, the whole world. And he shall separate from them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. You're blessed by God. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Will, now listen. Come, this is why you come in. Listen. To, well, first you were saved. But listen to these things. And this is what you should be doing this week. I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. 
naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And then shall the righteous, notice this is the righteousness that have inherited, they've made it. Uh, answer him saying, Lord, when shall we thee as hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When we saw a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee or when we uh, saw thee sick or in prison and came in. When, when did that happen? And the king, the Messiah, the anointed one, he said, I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Because you didn't do those things. I mean, that's a rhema word. I want this to sink in. What are you doing for God today willfully? Not, not with the gifts he's given you by your own free will. Feeding the sick, visiting people in prison, helping the homeless, clothing the naked. That's what Christ is going to call and bring up. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Do those works. 